Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope all of you are doing good. I am your biology ma'am Raisa Ruzana Khan. Today in this video we are going to cover the first chapter of our syllabus that is unit 1.1 studying living things. Page 2 and 3 from your book. As I already mentioned, the name of the chapter is Studying Living Things and in this chapter we are going to talk about living things and their features mainly. But first of all, let me tell you what biology is. Well, bio means life in ancient Greek words and logi means studying about the branches or to speak about it. So, in a way we can say that biology is actually the study of living things, alright? So, you see... All the living things, when a living thing is considered as a living thing, these are the features they must share. If these features are present in a living thing, they can be like fall into the category of living things. Alright, so what are the features? Like all living things, they move, they have senses, they need food, then they respire, they excrete, they reproduce and they grow. Okay. So this is how we can distinguish between a living thing and a non-living thing by detecting these features. So starting with the first feature that is movement. You see all the living things they are involved in some kind of living thing in some kind of movement in their own way. All right. Um, in case of animals or humans they use their whole body to move from one place to another. For example fish uses their Fins, animals or humans, they use their legs and birds use their wings to fly. In the pictures, there are some others like frog, sunflower. You see like how they are using their different techniques to move. But what about plants? Well, plants cannot like move from one place to another. But in their case, their growth is considered as their movement. All right. Um, the roots of the plants, they grow and move deep down the soil to get the water, the nutrients and all the good stuffs from the soil. And the shoots on the other hand, which is the upper part of the plant, they move towards the sunlight. So this is how they move. Okay, so all living things, they must move. That is like the necessity or we can say that is the prime feature of a living thing. Secondly, let's, uh, let's just talk about sensitivity. Well, all living things have this sensitivity. What is sensitivity? Sensitivity means that all living things have senses. They are like sensitive to the changes that are like happening around them. And in case of animals, they use their sense organs like eyes, ears, nose, tongues and skin to sense what's going on around them. But plants, they do not have any sense organs, but they can like react to the changes that is happening around. Like they can detect and respond to the things like gravity, water and light, etc. Alright. Thirdly comes feeding. So feeding is actually a very important feature. You see, all living things need food to grow and to provide energy for themselves. In this case, plants are really blessed as they can make their own food by a process called photosynthesis, but with the help of water, carbon dioxide and sunlight and chlorophyll, which is already present in the leaves. But on the other hand, animals, they rely on other plants and animals as they cannot like make their own food inside them like plants. They are just dependent on each other. And the animals are like classified into three groups like herbivores, carnivores, omnivores. Herbivores are animals which eat plants. Example can be rabbit. And omnivores are like the humans. Or us which eat like other plants or animals and carnivores lastly are the ones which rely on other animals only. An example, what can be an example? An example can be lion, tigers, right? So these are the classification of how the animals they are depending on each other for food. Okay, it's respiration. Well, Actually, in a way, all living things, they respire. Respiration simply means breathing in and out. 
You see, we breathe in oxygen and plants breathe out oxygen. Similarly, we breathe out carbon dioxide and plants take in that carbon dioxide. So in a way, all living things respire. Well, more specifically, we can say that respiration is the process of obtaining energy from the food that living things intake. For instance, we all need energy to move and grow and respiration is the process of obtaining Obtaining that energy from the food that we eat. All right. Um, during respiration, a number of chemical changes happens inside us, and uh, to obtain that energy from the food, usually with the help of oxygen, the process is taken further. All right. Then excretion. Now, likewise, all living things excrete, and excretion is actually the process of producing the waste substances like carbon dioxide, gas, urine, water, sweat, and all these stuff that is like the waste, waste stuff inside us or inside the plants out of our body. Well, plants also excrete, but it's not mentioned here in your book. Um, it's, um, have you guys seen the autumn plants? It's a bit orangish or brownish. You see, plants have like the leaves have chlorophyll inside them but at a time what happens the plants they excrete all their waste products on the leaves and inside the leaves what happens when the waste products get stuck the chlorophyll dies and the tree's leaves falls off okay so plants also are a part of excretion so they also excrete then comes reproduction so all living things reproduce if they don't do so what would happen is that that particular living thing would become extinct usually they would like despite they would literally they, they would literally like disappear um, usually animals reproduce by sexual reproduction by mating with other animals and produces like the smaller versions of themselves some small creatures produces by like reproduce by asexual reproduction by splitting into two or three an example here is mentioned that is fragmentation um you can see here it's this part fragmentation what's happening you see this is a lizard a lizard is broken down into three pieces and from that from that pieces from each pieces a new one is born right so these these are considered as fragmentation and it is also an example of what a sexual reproduction all right well you see um plant flower they also have sex in organs inside them and they produce seeds and with that seeds we get new plants okay so this is how plants are reproducing they are producing the seeds and the seeds are turning into new plants all right lastly the last and the most important one that is growth well all living things grow this is the prime one the movement and the growth without the movement and the growth we cannot like consider that thing as a living thing so all living things grow animals what happen is they grow at a certain time they stop growing they die we human we are growing growing but at a certain time we stop growing but what about plants? Well, plants also grow, but they can, they also die. That does not mean that they don't die. They also die, but they can grow throughout their life. For example, you can see the picture. The baby is turning into a girl. Then the girl is turning into, sorry, the baby is turning into a baby girl. And the baby girl is turning into a girl. Similarly, the animal, you can see they are growing. But at a certain time, their growth would stop. But in case of plants, they would grow as long as they live, all right? So they won't stop their growth. They will keep growing. So this was it about the features, the seven most important features you must know. And with this feature, you can distinguish between a living thing and non-living thing. All right, this is the end of the chapter. Thank you so much for your attention. Inshallah, we will meet in our next slide.